IRA marked the beginning of 1994 with a wave of firebomb attacks. Several people were hurt, including two men who'd been working on scaffolding. The shooting happened just after one o'clock outside a co-op building. It's believed two gunmen were involved. Last night's car bombing on the Falls Road was a clear indication that for the time being at least, the loyalist terrorist groups intend continuing with their violent campaigns. But a bomb had been left inside and they had minutes to get out. In Portadown, balaclavered youths hijacked first one lorry and threw in a petrol bomb. Then minutes later, another vehicle was ablaze, rammed into a nearby roundabout. The Taoiseach and I have now agreed on a joint declaration on Northern Ireland. It is a declaration for democracy and dialogue, and it is based on consent. It makes no compromise on strongly held principles, but it does embody a common view that there is an opportunity to end violence for good in Northern Ireland. We believe that it's now up to those who've used or supported violence to take that opportunity. The door is open to them. They won't have a better opportunity and they don't have a better option. Our message is clear and it is simple. There is no future in violence. The current phase of the Troubles would have started about 1969. Um, and it started actually after a parade in Derry, I think it was. The, my grandfather was on the parade, he was an orange man and um, I remember him coming back that evening and they'd been attacked at, on the parade, the parade that had been happening for maybe 50 or so years and that this particular year it, it developed into a full blown riot and the police were, bro were, were attacked, um, the, the rioting spread to Belfast. That affected me, you know, because I remember being in the house with my grandparents when, when this was all happening. And he came back from that parade, shaken up, and described how they'd been attacked with darts and ball bearings and all sorts of things. I started putting that into my work. Um, when I went to art college, I was sort of looking at what I wanted to study, and the parades became my focus because that's where the um, it directly influenced my family. Um, so I started looking at the banners, um, the regalia, and. Uh, Th that all started coming into my work. Being in Belfast in the trouble, in the serious troubles, that we, I mean, I saw lots of incidents, from bombs exploding, to people getting shot. I got a mural destroyed by a bomb as well. The first mural I painted was nineteen eighty one on the side of a, a factory. Um, there was eleven panels. Me and Dermot and Fergus Delargy painted it in the summer of nineteen eighty one during the hung hunger strikes. In 1990, I think it was 1997, we first started doing, we had a, a, there was a study tour brought to Belfast by the British Council. They brought a whole lot of arts administrators from America into Belfast and I made contact with um, Clayton Campbell. We wanted to do some kind of cultural exchange projects between Northern Ireland and Los Angeles. And that's why we were brought on this tour. All of the uh, sectarian murals uh, throughout Belfast, never seen anything quite like that. We hadn't thought of an artist yet, uh, but I had a couple of people in mind, but the main one was uh, Francisco. And that was because um, he was a colleague at 18th Street and uh, because of his background, he really had the moral authority to understand what it might mean to come into Belfast that was, you know, in the midst of a civil war. Knowing about the history of Northern Ireland and having experienced the troubles in my country, feeling very much like there were a lot of parallels, the possibility of living in peace again was something that was very inspiring to people all over the world because many of us in many places have understood the historical processes at work and what was affecting regular people in Belfast, you know, people from all sides. Francisco worked on several designs and we selected what we th thought were the 
most appropriate for the wall and um, that's how the design was arrived at and then some of the artists assisted um, Jennifer Troughton worked on it on the side she was ensured to go up on the, the scaffolding I suppose because it's a figurative mural you needed to have a certain amount of painting skills so I'm being a being a figurative realist painter he he asked me would I get involved it is a massive mural you literally have to do big broad strokes you think you've done something that's quite impact and then you come off the scaffolding and you go back and you can't see it I think murals are still they're still important um and I'm glad to see that a lot of the paramilitary murals are changing I mean there's always going to be blood and guts and glory ones I, I I think we're naive to think they're ever going to go away but it's good that they're reducing a number and it's good to see communities engaging more a mural is going up that tell more about the history of the area history of the the people and um the you know the shared lived experiences of, of the community my generation have grown up with the paramilitary murals which are very negative very graphic you know terrifying for young people as well uh, so to do a mural that was actually going to be bright and colourful and have a message of peace uh, was obviously quite a, quite a nice thing to do. I suppose we all had ideals about it being part of a peace process that would heal our society, so that's why we all have always felt it was an important work, and which is why we got annoyed when it was more recently got defaced with the speech bubbles that are currently on it, because it was an, an iconic work and, you know, even as... Professor Olson pointed out even a graffiti artist doesn't graffiti over somebody else's art so and you wouldn't imagine a Banksy getting painted out like that. They were playing on the word mural and then calling the character on the mural Muriel which is very low brow and I was actually quite annoyed when I realised that because it's completely subverted the nature of the mural which is a community mural it's publicly owned it's it's made in the spirit of peace and reconciliation and hope. Hope's the thing that underpins my work in a way it's the it's what keeps me doing it. You have to have an uplifting sort of view in that sort of an environment. But it, it flows back into my own work, that, that the, the mural work. So my paintings, some <laughs> some say they have a, a dark edge to them all the time, but it's one of those things you have to... I, I just show that edge and hope that, that the good side of it can be seen and not the negative. That's how I make art out of all of this chaos.